Ellis B. Feaster's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. Where's me pot of gold? Okay. Good afternoon, New England. Hello, New England. 1-617-266-6868. That's the, that's the number. I guess that's still the number. This is Howie Carr. That's Jerry Williams' theme music. Jerry is, uh, Jerry Williams is passed on. This morning, about 5 a.m. Eastern Time at uh, Mass General Hospital, had been in declining health for a while. He had his last show about uh, six week, about about six weeks ago, I guess, on uh, on this radio station, his last big Boston home. And uh, we're going to talk about Jerry for a while longer. At uh, and the toll free number, if you'd like to join us, is one eight seven seven four six nine four three two two one eight seven seven four six nine four three two two. If you want to leave a message on the chump line. The recorded voicemail message service of the Howie Car Show. Call 617-779-3469. 617-779-3469. Our fax number is 617-779-3467. You can always try to listen to the show on the Internet, howiecar.org. We don't have a poll question today. And uh, you can always send us an email at howiecar at wrko.com. Now joining us for a few minutes is uh, someone who worked with uh, Jerry in the uh, the golden age of uh, talk radio in Boston, and uh, I would say that would be the uh, the the eighties and the ninety the early nineties, and that's uh, Gene Burns. He's now on uh, KGO in San Francisco. Gene, thanks for being with us on this sad day. Well, Howie, a pleasure to talk to you. I wish the circumstances under which we're talking were a bit better. I I got a call about seven o'clock West Coast time this morning uh, mm-hmm. telling me that Jerry had died. I. Uh, it's sort of a bittersweet day. I mean, on the one hand, talk radio has lost one of its real giants and one of its founders. And on the other hand, as you know and as you've been saying, I mean, we're flooded with uh, a whole passel of great memories of working with Jerry, who was a real professional. Yeah, he was. Someone just sent me an, e- an, uh, an email. We just played the cut with him and Ted Kennedy <laughs> when Ted Kennedy was in the limousine. And the person remembered it just like I did yesterday. You remember the exact time of it, how long it was. It, it, there were just so many moments like that with Jerry. Well, there were moments like that. And, and I, I guess some, some of the moments that uh, have sort of faded into history but are very, very important. I mean, back in the early days when Jerry was one of the lone liberal voices around uh, he lived under constant death threats when he would have Malcolm X on the program, which he did many times. They had to have security at the station because people would threaten to come down and kill them both. He really was not only a pioneer, but a very gutsy guy. I mean, I remember, the, as you do, the, the battle over the seat belts. That actually cost him a fair amount of audience uh, during the time he waged that battle. But... He beat right. the insurance companies at their own game. He really was a remarkable man. And they, they pulled his uh, voting records. They, they went after him on a, on a number of different levels. Oh, my. Yeah, I mean, they, boy, oh, boy. You know, some of us would have been proud to be on Nixon's list. Jerry was on a list of his own that uh, was yep. maintained fairly well by the state and of they tried, and Nixon And Nixon tried to, uh, Nixon tried, well, I don't know, Westinghouse, I'm sure, had a lot of pressure when uh, when he gave the uh, tape of, the famous tape of the uh, the, the the Vietnam veteran on his on his show on uh, the Clear Channel station WBZ. Yeah, absolutely. Went, you remember that? And he I and, do. Uh, they, and and George McGovern started running around the country playing it. And right. uh, and I, I I I still remember. You know, they said that night when the story first broke, they said George McGovern was given a copy of a tape from a Boston radio talk show host. <laughs> and I didn't. You didn't have to tell me who that radio talk show host was, Gene. Cause, no, he cause was I one knew. of a kind. He was one of a kind, and I. He did so much and accomplished so much in his career that it's it's hard to isolate on any particular thing that he did that was more important than any other. But he was a real pioneer. You know the thing that always got me, Gene, is he he always he always felt uh, uh, slighted when someone called him an entertainer. And and I used to tell him, I said, what. Why do you why do you uh, recoil from being called an entertainer? I mean, if you you've got a big audience here, you if you yeah. if you can't keep the audience, you can't teach them anything. No, I mean, who would not remember with glee the rants that Jerry used to get into? I, I to, one I remember the teeny tiny table for two. The man was obsessed about going to a restaurant and being put at a table for two, even if he was alone or there were just two of them, and he would get into these. He would go on for ten. 15, 20 minutes, the teeny tiny table 
too. It was brilliant, but it was pure entertainment. And as you say, he never wanted to call it that. Yeah, and then the, the, uh, we were talking too about sometimes he would come out, and if, if it was if it was really a portentous moment or, or whatever, or he just wanted to build suspense, he would come out. The music would end, and he wouldn't speak for five <laughs> or ten seconds, which of course. <laughs> You know, mere mortals like ourselves, we know not to violate that rule of, uh, of dead air, right? First of all, in this business, five seconds is an eternity when the music ends. And, yeah, he... he well, and I one of, one of the first things that popped into my head uh, when uh, I got over the initial shock of Jerry's death this morning was the semi-annual sex survey. My God, they practically had to turn the radio station into a war zone, warn people not to listen, and he would chortle his way through an entire week of, where did you do it? You were leaning against a fence in the north end? What? <laughs> it was just crazy. Yeah, I, re I remember, yeah, I didn't, so after that thing was over, I really didn't want to come into the studio that much, because I didn't know what the hell had been going on in there. <laughs> well, that's true. It, it, it was, it's just remarkable. I, the only sad, well, the sad thing, of course, is that he's gone. The 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 great thing is he had such a full and rich life uh, as a performer. And the the sad thing is that near the end of his life, he he wasn't as fulfilled as I guess he would have hoped to be. Because Jerry Williams was the kind of guy that, uh, without a talk show, just felt sort of at odds with himself, you know. And you know, was, I always think Gene of, of of Elvis Presley, you know, of a guy yeah. who you know had it all and should have should have uh, should have had a great life and should have enjoyed himself, but he never did. And I and I just get this feeling that sometimes Jerry didn't enjoy it as much as he should have. You know, I think you're right. Our offices were side by side when I worked at RKO, and and uh, in fact, you came through a door from the hallway, and then you, there were two doors, one into mm -hmm. my office and one into his, and I. Many is the midday that I would sit in there prepping a program with a producer and Jerry would get into a screaming match on the telephone with somebody over something. Yeah. Usually it turned out to be relatively insignificant, but, you know, he, he, there were times when he did not appear to be a very happy guy. He, uh, I tell you, though, he's, you know, and the other thing, Gene, is you, you know this, and, and, and we all, everybody who's in the business knows it, that... As, as you, it's it's almost like pitching a baseball game. Some day, you know, some days yeah. you have it, some days you yeah. don't. And you know, yeah. so, and a lot of the time you don't know till you get up out there on the mound, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and you throw the first few pitches. And this guy was on top of the world at age sixty-seven. I yeah. still that's the that's the thing that gets me is the the, the longevity, the, just the the fact that he could keep it going at that level for that long that amount of time. Well, it was unbelievable. I mean, he had an encyclopedic knowledge of the topic material he covered, as we both know. Mm -hmm. He never forgot anything, particularly if it involved Mike Dukakis, and uh, and he <laughs> uh, he just he he. He was the kind. He's the. He's like the Dalmatian who retires and hears the fire bell go off and starts to run. I mean, he, Jerry was talk radio. Yeah. Talk radio was Jerry for a long period of time in New England. Yeah, and, and you know the thing is that I was listening to the with the Ted Kennedy uh, uh, interview today again, and it reminded me of something he used to do. Even if he wasn't a hundred percent up on a topic, what he would do is he first he would read. He'd read the the important <laughs> paragraphs. Right. And then, then when he'd come back to the debate, he would read the paragraphs again, only he would not credit the person. <laughs> so all of a sudden, Ted Kennedy thinks he's got Jerry on the ropes, but all of a sudden, he's not arguing against Jerry. He's arguing against Anthony Lewis. <laughs> and Anthony Lewis spent two hours putting this sentence together. Yeah, you know, and yeah. Jerry, and, and of course, Ted Ted is just looking for an ice cube. Yeah, and he's going, sure. where, where did, that's about the time he just, you know, said, I, I'm, you know, I've had it, you know. And, and 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 the thing, and also, did you ever see him when he turned down when someone would be irritating him and he would just turn down the volume? Oh yeah, it'd, it'd be like the guy was the the wicked witch of the west and in, uh, in the Wizard of Oz melting. Exactly, you know. He, and he could, as as we both know, he could be absolutely relentless. I mean, one of the highest compliments Jerry was ever paid. I don't think I ever told him. Uh, I was invited to speak to a dinner of some Greek organization there in New England at one time, and I went to do that. And Governor Dukakis was on the dais uh, yeah. as an honored guest. Uh, and I think he he had left the governor's job and had run for president and was no longer really active in politics. And uh, Dukakis got up when he made his remarks, and he said, well, it's a good thing you didn't have Jerry Williams here to speak, or I wouldn't have showed up. And I thought, you know, you think that's a shot, but that's a great compliment, you know. It is. It really is. I mean, somewhere, somehow, uh, we haven't heard from uh, Governor Dukakis. Oh, I, don't I, think, I, I don't think you're likely to hear from Governor <laughs> Dukakis. I, I, I mean, uh, well, look at the whole thing. I and mean, you were a part of it, so you know when, when, yeah. he, when he finally 
created the governors, and you three, you and uh, Barbara and he would sit in the studio and run the state on the microphone. It was just priceless. Priceless. Well, Gene Burns, we really appreciate you joining us here uh, this afternoon. And yeah. uh, you, how, how are things going at KGO? Things are doing very well, thanks. I hear you're doing great guns. And all yeah. out here on the left coast, we're doing okay. I mean, things the station's doing well, and I yeah. love you've it. Been, you've been number one in the book, uh, KGO, for what, 99 books in a row? 99 books. That's quite a, that's quite a, uh, yeah. quite a run. We're a little worried. We need one more to hit the century mark, and then I don't know why. Maybe the boss will retire. I don't know. Okay, Gene Burns, thanks, pop sorry. in the next time you're in uh, New England. And I know you are all the time. It. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks a lot. That's Gene Burns. He worked with Jerry Williams uh, for, for many years. He uh, he had the midday show before Jerry came on. 1-877-469-4322. We'll be back to more calls about Jerry Williams when we return on Howie Carr. Boston's WRKO, the talk, talk, talk station. WRKO Skyway Patrol. Let's start off on a Route 2 westbound, getting word of a new problem just after 190, a rollover right in the median strip. Also, 290 westbound, tractor trailer rollover still working right at Route 12. The ramp is taken out. Should be clear within an hour, an hour and a half, hopefully. Mass bike westbound, accident just cleared in the left lanes and center lanes before Route 9, still as you back to Route 30. Downtown, the deck is okay. The central artery is very heavy on the southbound side. Expressway northbound, heavy Mass Ave into the new tunnel, and southbound is jammed down to Mass Ave, then heavy from East Milton Square down to the Braintree split. I'm Jim Daly, W. WRKO Skyway Patrol. 200 cartons of eggs. Yeah, that's what told us till tomorrow. Did you pick up the semi gloss? All 80. People. Hey, about that 20 foot long plaster hot dog we ordered for the roof? Does it come with relish or sauerkraut? They shop like small business people. And with Open, the small business network, they get the rewards program they deserve. One with no limit on points, no expiration date on points, and every reward from air miles to flat screen TVs, but only when they get what their business needs with the American Express business card. Careful, careful. That's one expensive grandfather clock. Now where should we put the other 12 of them? If you want to get rewarded no matter how much you spend for your business, call 1-800-NOW-OPEN. The American Express business card. The card with the savings and services of the open network built in. Enrollment in the membership rewards program required. There is no limit on the number of points you can earn. Terms and fees may vary for American Express business cards. Not all American Express business cards are eligible for enrollment. New England is giant country. 854 giant. Who do you call when you wish the bus just the other day, I got a phone call from a listener thanking me for telling him about Giant Glass. He said he was driving home from work, heard me talk about the Giant, then wham, a rock pops up and cracks his windshield. He gets home, calls 1-800-54-GIANT, and guess what? The big blue van pulls up to his driveway in no time, replaces the cracked windshield, and even calls his insurance agent to handle all the paperwork. So he calls me and says, thanks for the tip, Howie. Giant Glass did an unbelievable job. And because he had comprehensive insurance, it didn't even cost him a dime. Let me tell you, people, nobody gets to your car faster or does the job better than the experts from Giant Glass. So call the number more New Englanders trust. 1-800-54-GIANT. 1-800-54-GIANT. Federal college loan rates are now at a 37-year low which means if you currently have a college loan, it's time to refinance and lock in these record low rates. Call 1-800-2-COLLEGE and we'll help you lock in a rate as low as 3.5%. These federal loans have no fees, costs, or credit checks. Call 1-800-2-COLLEGE to speak with a college loan professional who will help you lower your monthly payment and lock in these record low interest rates. Call 1-800-2-COLLEGE anytime, 24-7. It's the smartest call you could make. <coughs> it's late at night. My husband's coughing. He's all stuffed up, too. Oh. Will she give him just any cough syrup? No way. Dr. Mom knows better. New Robitussin PM has a decongestant, so Robitussin PM stops his cough and helps him breathe. Ah. Now, both of us can sleep. New Robitussin PM, from the brand recommended by doctors, pharmacists, and Dr. Mom. Also contains an antihistamine. Use as directed. You know, you ought to check your credit report. But I just don't have time. I have to clean out the garage. And take the kids to the doctor. And balance my checkbook. And take the dog to the vet. And mow the lawn. And do the grocery shopping. And call the Stop. If you haven't checked your credit report, there's a fast, easy solution. 
Log on to FreeCreditReport.com and we'll show you how to find out online what's in your credit report and get 30 days of our credit check monitoring service free. So don't say, I'm just too busy. Log on to FreeCreditReport.com today. The following conversation is real. It took place on November 27, 2002 between an OnStar advisor and a subscriber who was involved in an accident. That's our emergency. I need help, please. I have you located on U.S. Highway 45. Can you call my husband? Just as soon as I get emergency services to you. One moment. 911 office. Yes, this is Victoria from OnStar. I have an accident with airbag deployment on U.S. Highway 45. When you have OnStar, a live advisor can help you in virtually any situation 24 hours a day. Hello, ma'am. Uh, emergency services have been contacted. You wanted me to call your husband? Can I get the number? 885. OnStar is available on many Chevrolet cars and trucks. Visit your Chevy dealer or Chevy.com for details. Hello, Mrs. Drag. Your husband is on the line. Go ahead, sir. You okay? I'll be there in five minutes. Okay. Ma'am, would you like me to stay on the line with you? Oh, no, ma'am. There's just good people here. Thank you. OnStar. Always there. Always ready. From your lips to our ears. Who you are and what you think. Boston's WRKO. The talk station. What can you say about Jerry Williams? Well, whereas he is the inventor of the modern form of democracy known as talk radio, he has dedicated his life to speaking up for the common person. He has always championed the cause of the underdog. He has set the standard for rabble-rousing by which all other rabble-rousers are judged. He is a living testament to the Oxford English Dictionary definition of the word cantankerous. He is always vigilant against encroachments upon individual freedoms he is Boston's greatest living patriot, except for Bill Parcells. I, William F. Weld, governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, declare that next Sunday will be Jerry Williams Day. Congratulations, Jerry, on being inducted into the National Radio Hall of Fame. Mary wants to know, did he ever get a dinner? Not to the best of my knowledge. Here's, what, here's an email from Paul Yavino, one of his uh, producers, that uh, when, he was, when uh, he was going after Kevin White. Howie, thanks for the tribute to Jerry today. We all knew this was coming, but it is still a sad day. Glad we resolved any problems years ago. No need to go into the problems that he and Jerry had, but they were resolved. If Milton Berle was Mr. Television, then Jerry was Mr. Talk Radio. He will be missed. Thanks again, Paul Yovino. And, uh, Paul, if you want to go to the uh, to, to say goodbye to the dean, you can come by the uh, Carol Thomas Funeral Home, 22 Oak Street in Hyde Park on Thursday. Visiting hours are 2 to 4 and 6 to 9 p.m. That's the Oak Carol Thomas Funeral Home, 22 Oak Street, Hyde Park. Visiting hours 2 to 4 and 6 to 9. Bob, in the Bob, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Bob. Well, Howie, I've got many memories of Jerry today, but one I want to share is about seven years ago, towards the end of his career, when he was doing that Saturday show, mm -hmm. he came on, and in typical Jerry style, you know, he didn't just ask a question once, but he would go on sometimes a tirade, but the silliest thing, he was on this tirade, it was late March, and he's asking, when do we turn the clocks? I want to know, when is daylight saving time? When do we turn the clocks? And finally, after about two or three minutes of this, I'm sitting there thinking, well, I know what day we turn the clocks. It's April 3rd or whatever it is. So I figured, well, I'm just going to call up, get his producer, tell him, will you tell Jerry it's the 3rd of April, whatever, right? just so he'll get off this. Well, I dialed the number up, it rings. And I expected to hear WRKO or Jerry Williams show or something like that. Instead, I hear this guy saying, hello. And I'm thinking, maybe I've got the wrong number. So he hear, hello, and I said, hello. He said, hello again. I said, hello. All of a sudden, Howie, I get this knot in the pit of my stomach. I'm thinking, it's Jerry Williams, and I'm on the air. And I very nervously managed to... Hi, Jerry. Yes. And instantly I heard an angry, Hi, Jerry. But then I committed the mortal sin. I asked the question, So how are you? And he yelled, I'm not going to answer that. I mean, I wanted to just sink through the floor. But we talked for like 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. He asked me my age, what uh -huh. I like to do. You know, I'll, we went through this whole interview like I was a celebrity. I'm pacing all around, dying, just wanting to hang up the phone, and then you hang up hoping nobody heard you. Right. 
uh, although, you know, that's been something I've been kind of embarrassed about, although every year that we turn the clocks and we just did it, I always think of that conversation, but when I heard about it today, I was telling somebody at work and we had a good laugh about it, so... No, we all we all have those uh, memories of Jerry Williams. It's just, uh, he, it, that, and that's and again, that's, that, that's one of the things that made the show great, is when he had nothing going on, he'd do something like that, just pick up a phone and start hassling you. And, you were part. You were part of the show that day, Bob. <laughs> I was. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for the call, Dot. You're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Dot. Hi. Hi. I really admired and respected Jerry, and I, you know, I, I'm going to miss him a lot. Well. He'd, he'd tell you to he'd tell you to move on with your life, uh, Dot. You know, and you just you know you know don't uh, don't lose the memories, but uh, you, you have to uh, you have to keep on living. Oh well, I'm gonna live. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Dean Burns kind of stole my thunder. I wanted to remind people about his many interviews with Malcolm X. Mm-hmm. He seemed to be proud of them that they were dangerous. Oh yeah, he, he they were they were dangerous. I mean, he and again, he was in Chicago during the uh, during the Democratic convention in 1968. I think that was a pretty. Uh, dicey time for uh, for liberal talk show hosts you know when mayor daly had the uh, police running wild uh clubbing uh delegates politicians and uh the street people out there thanks thanks for the call dot brad you're next with howie carr go ahead brad howie. hi uh it was really great to hear gene burns uh, gene and jerry were just big personal heroes of mine over the years. I'm 38 years old. I've lived in New, in New England all my life. Mm-hmm. And my mom used to listen to Jerry in the kitchen on the old AM radio. And, and I sort of grew up with him as just sort of being one of those voices right. from your youth that's just, you sort of always expected to be there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this kind of hits pretty hard. I, I learned a lot from Jerry. I, I think one of the biggest things was how to balance your cynicism. You know, there's a lot of people out there who are cynical about politicians. You don't have to go very far to find somebody who's going to say, ah, you know, you can't trust any of them. But what Jerry showed me was that you could you could be cynical and not get sucked in, but still be involved and engaged. I mean, he talked about this stuff every day. Yeah. And yet he was never uh, a rump squad, as you would say. No. <laughs> no, he, he never he never was. Thanks for the call, Brad. Uh, Paul in the car. You're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Paul. Or Kevin. Go ahead, Kevin. Yes, Howie. <laughs> yes. I want to. I, I think it's uh, pretty decent of you to uh, have this tribute to uh, Jerry Williams today. Thank you. It's really decent of you, Howie. Th- he gave me my start. What? What? Should, I mean, there's no, no other way I could play this one, Kevin. How'd you get started on the radio? He he had me he had me on. He he brought me. I mean, I'd, I'd set in a couple times here and there, but. He brought me in during the Democratic Convention to sit with him every day in Atlanta, 88. I'm Howie Carr. Variety, quality, good prices, and friendly, efficient service. That's what families want from their supermarkets, and that's what we give them at Pathmark. Eileen Scott, CEO of Pathmark Supermarkets, and her fleet business financial services partner, Kathy Garrity. Consumers depend on supermarkets to provide essential products and services. We work with Eileen and her team to face any financial challenge. We're in a cash business, so we need a bank we can trust to handle it efficiently. That's why Fleet manages the cash for over 50 Pathmark stores. Plus, we help meet Eileen's lending and payroll needs. When we wanted to go public in 2000, Fleet helped us refinance debt to make it happen. Now they're giving us ideas tailored to our employees. And you know, we've already begun discussing custom payroll enhancements that would be great for your workforce. You know us so well, it feels like you work for us. I do work for you. (laughs) To see what Fleet can do for you, call 1-866-270-4014 today. Fleet Business Financial Services. More businesses turn to Fleet. Fleet Bank member FDIC. Now this update from the talk station, WRKO. I'm Listo Fisher. Six months suspension without pay, but only if she apologizes. That's the recommendation of a hearing officer in the case of Superior Court Judge Maria Lopez being disciplined for the way she handled a transgendered child molester. The dean of Austin talk radio is dead. Jerry Williams died today at Mass General. He was 79, credited with inventing issue-oriented talk. Now the latest on Iraq from ABC News. Could be a connection between Iraq and Al-Qaeda. ABC's Ann Compton with details. The search for weapons of mass destruction has yet to uncover hard evidence, but today the U.S. government does believe... 
it has captured a potentially important figure, an al-Qaeda operative in Baghdad that would provide new credibility to the U.S. claim that Saddam was helping the terrorist network. And Compton, ABC News, the White House. U.S. officials are still trying to figure out what happened in a firefight in the Iraqi city of Fallujah, west of Baghdad. The Iraqis say 13 people died when U.S. troops fired on them. Army Lieutenant Scott Wood says his soldiers were only defending themselves during a demonstration. The crowd massed against us came uh, close towards our sector, no more than 20 feet outside of our sector, opened up with AK-47s directly to our location. U.S. officials say they can't confirm any fatalities. The Iraqi man who helped save Private Jessica Lynch is being rewarded with asylum in the U.S. Jerry Preston, ABC News. WRKO News Time now at 4.32. WRKO Skyway Patrol, downtown Lower Deck of 93, looking pretty good, just merge congestion. Rutherford Ave inbound, the ramp to the Tobin Bridge getting reports of an accident there. Artery southbound is jammed up. Sumner Tunnel got that left lane closure inside. The expressway south is jammed down to Mass Ave, then East Milton down to the split. Outside of town, Route 2 westbound, get a rollover in the median just after Route 190, not causing much of a delay, just watch out there. 290 eastbound, still working that tractor trailer rollover right at Route 12. 128 northbound is open to Pike to 20, and 93 northbound is heavy spot pond to 128. I'm Jim Daly, WRKO Skyway Patrol. Thank you, Jim. WRKO Money Scope. Ginny Casola live from the news desk of the Wall Street Journal, brought to you by Fleet Bank. Ginny. An early rally lost steam listo, and profit takers kept gains to a minimum today. Dow Jones Industrials were up, but just by 31 to 85.02. NASDAQ gained 9, and the S&P was up 3. Investors were encouraged by the latest reading on consumer confidence, up sharply from last month. Some Fidelity Investments employees will find a little more in their paychecks this year. The company says it has been navigating successfully through these hard times, and employees with a base salary of less than $75,000 will be eligible for merit raises this year. Again, the Dow up 31, NASDAQ up 9. From the news desk of the Wall Street Journal, I'm Ginny Cosola on Boston's WRKO, the talk station. This is your 30-second Vanguard Insight on spotting illusions. When comparing mutual funds, a high return is only high if it's still there after expenses and taxes. After all, if you don't get to keep it, did you really make it? So always ask, how much of this is mine? Then call 1-888-VANGUARD or visit us at Vanguard.com and invest in our way of investing. Call for prospectus for more information and read it carefully before you invest. Vanguard Marketing Corporation Distributor. It's alarming, but true. People do judge you by the words you use. When you speak well, you command respect. You move ahead faster. Verbal advantage on audio cassettes will give you the words you need to communicate with confidence and flair. All you have to do is listen. Learn more about Verbal Advantage now. 1-888-230-WORD. That's 230-WORD. 1-888-230-WORD. And now, our motivational speaker, Carl! Who's ready to reach the end of winter? Allergies have your sinuses congested? Afrin No-Drip Nasal Spray starts to relieve congestion instantly. Sudafed takes up to 30 minutes to start working. And after four hours, Afrin still does a better job keeping nasal passages open. Ah, now I feel like a winner. Breathe better in an Afrin instant. Use as directed compared to Sudafed Maximum Strength 60 milligrams. Who? Who? What? What? When? When? Where? Where? Why? Why? Get your words worth worth. with Boston's WRKO, the talk station. 1-877-469-4322. The chump line's a little iffy today, obviously, uh, because we're talking about someone who's passed on. But if you would like to give give a call in, this is a good day to get a message on. You can rip me. Feel free to rip me. What an ungrateful, treacherous bastard I am. You know the you know the routine. I'll give you a hint. Several people have asked if you've made inquiries about Jerry's raincoat. <laughs> okay, so don't use the raincoat joke. We've got that one. It's, we've got that one in repeated forms, apparently. If you would like to call about something else, may I suggest Maria Lopez, the uh, judge. Uh, the hearing officer today, uh, uh, former former Judge E. George Dare, has recommended a, uh, a six-month suspension without pay for Maria Lopez and, and wants her to... Uh, apologize formally to the prosecutor whom she dressed down in the uh, transvestite thing. So if you want to give uh, Maria Lopez some grief and her 
porn boss husband, uh, Steve Mindich from the Phoenix. There's a suggestion for you. 1-877-469-4322. You know, one of uh, Jerry's uh, great crusades was the uh, prison that was going to be built in New Braintree, which was a bucolic little community in Worcester County. And uh, Jerry just went uh, went to the wall to stop that thing. And uh, and, and it, he did he did stop it. And uh, and one of the people that uh, that was involved in that in the, at the time uh, and, and is still involved in politics is uh, Senator Steve Brewer. Are you there, Steve? Hi, Howie. How Hi. are you doing? Good. What are your memories of Jerry, Steve? Well, I felt really bad today when I heard about that on my way into the state house about Jerry Williams. But, you know, he never quit on that town for stopping the prison in the brain tree. And singularly, he and uh, Dapper O'Neill, and then when Bill Weld stood on a bale of hay out in the brain tree, and he said, if you elect me governor, I won't put a uh, prison in this town. And Weld kept his word. But Jerry Williams couple of years that was a roller coaster there was yeah. a lot of time there was 25 million dollars worth of tax dollars that was spent out there and people were ready to give up and jerry williams never gave up and he was he was tenacious and you know he would come back to new braintree and he was like the conquering hero uh he's a good guy and he was a good guy to have on your side and uh, yeah. uh i always remember when you go through new braintree that it stayed pretty nice and green and pastoral because of a guy named jerry williams that's in your district, right? Oh, it is. That and 29 other towns, along with uh, <laughs> BB's hometown. Petersham. Or yes, Petersham, whatever it's, however it's pronounced. I it's, appreciate the tribute you have for Jerry today. Hey, listen, why don't you guys ought to get a, you know, he would have, this is one thing, he, lo he loved uh, tributes like this. You, you guys ought to so, suggest to the selectmen that they put up a plaque or something for him, Steve. You know, I think I, I might do that, or, or planting even a tree out there or something. You know, would you come out if we do that? I'll come, yes, I'll come out for that. We'll, we'll get yes. you a box of donuts, my friend. <laughs> Make sure there's some chocolate ones in there. That's all I ask for. But yeah, I'll come out there for that. We can, uh, that, that would be, that would be a nice tribute. And it would, and you know what, that would, that would, that's something he would have appreciated a lot. I'll pass it along to the Board of Selectmen. And again, kudos to you for your tribute today. Okay, thank you. That's Senator Steve Brewer. He, uh, he was involved in the uh, the new brain tree and I'll tell you that that's one of the things Jerry uh, Jer Jerry was not a uh, he had high ratings always but he was not a ratings driven person because there were some days even I one of his biggest fans I'd be driving around and it'd be another new brain tree show and I go oh my god oh I can't take it I cannot stand any more new brain tree and I'd turn it off uh, ch uh check your next with Howie Carr go ahead check yeah good afternoon hi hi uh I drove a truck around the city of Boston for 50 years, and I always listened to talk radio, and he was one of my favorites. And one particular day, he had on a financial advisor, and this gentleman would talk about, you never invest money over 18 months. Uh huh. Well, my wife, that particular day, had to go down and roll over a few CDs that we had. Right. And she rolled them, this was in the early, 81, 82. She rolled them over for five years at 12%. <laughs> I, I wish she would have rolled them over for 30 years. Right. So in other, so in other words, Jerry had another stiff of a guest on. Well, he had but, fortun stiff. but fortunately, you didn't take his advice, well, Jake. Well, she did. Well, when I came home from work, we had a row about it. Because, of course, 81, 82, this, there was still a high inflation rate. And uh, so it was, it, was the it was the prime time to uh, to buy a CD because uh, pretty soon the inflation was gone and the rates were down about 3 or 4%. Thanks, Chick, for the call. I appreciate it. Chip Ford now joining us. Uh, he's from uh, Citizens for Limited Taxation, and uh, he's the partner of uh, Barbara Anderson, who was one of the three governors along with me and uh, Jerry on the air every Tuesday. How ironic! It's Tuesday afternoon. We're doing basically a governor's show, a, a one a one man governor's show, because uh, Barbara's on the road. Chip was involved in the uh, in the seatbelt, uh, the first seatbelt referendum, right? Uh, right, Chip. Well, more than involved. One for Jerry, I never would have been involved. That was the first thing I ever did in politics, and he sucked me in to start the committee to repeal the mandatory seatbelt law, <laughs> promising me I'll never have to do any public speaking. <laughs> and if you don't do part well, as, as your audience knows, that's probably one of the toughest things in the world to get in front of, on a stage in front of an audience. Right. He swore I wouldn't have to do it. And I was doing it like a week later. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, see, I always knew you could. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, he, he is. You were just a, you were a listener, right? Yeah, I was a listener. Yeah. I, I was a lettering a boat. Yeah, you were you were yeah you were a sign painter, and yeah. you just and, you, and it just PO'd you just like it PO'd a lot of people yeah. that they had sneakily passed this legislation to uh, require mandatory seatbelts after after they'd said as they have with so many things that they'd never do it, and then they did it. Well, he uh, he had that rally at Gardner Auditorium in the yeah. middle of a winter blizzard. Yeah, and packed Gardner Auditorium. That's when I first got involved. I went into there, I got my petitions. Uh -huh. But I got my signatures, and uh, we got it on the ballot. And I called him up one day and says, are you going to have a, a campaign or anything? And he says, well, why don't you come on in and talk about it? And I said, come in, <laughs> talk to Jerry in person? Oh, my God. <laughs> Next yeah. thing you know, he's got me signed up, run on the committee, and I ran the campaign that year. You, you know, you, when, you listen to the, when you listen to people like me and Chip say that, you know, like he was our, you know, we grew up listening to him and all that, I mean... It's not only you know it's not only me and Chip and you know people like us. It's Paul Songus, who you know if he hadn't had cancer and he hadn't had a guy and a campaign manager who was stealing the money, Nick Rizzo, and he hadn't been running against such a sleazeball like Bill Clinton, he might have been president. And and he always used to say that it was he could never believe it. Paul Senator Paul Songus, when he would get to come in and sit next to Jerry <laughs> Williams, it was like his child. He said it. He said it was my he was my childhood. He